Hi, this is David Strollmeyer. I'm the director of restoration projects at Cinerama. I'm going to show you some restoration samples from the work we have done on Search for Paradise. Any restoration project is challenging, but with three panel Cinerama's complexity, it is quite daunting and has its own set of unique rules. About two years ago, we finished the reconstruction and restoration of two Cinerama features, Cinerama Holiday and South Seas Adventure. Both of these releases included restoration documentary shorts with lots of information on how it was accomplished. Therefore, we want to continue this same effort with Search for Paradise. As many of you know, the Cinerama negatives were not stored properly for over 50 years, which caused the color to be severely faded and in some cases, film was heavily damaged, missing or lost. And vinegar syndrome, a sign of the deterioration of film stock, was very apparent. So for those of you who do not know what Cinerama is or the mechanics of Cinerama, here is an example comparing Cinerama film to normal film. On the left, you have some normal 35 millimeter film. It is four perforations high and has a soundtrack area off to the left taking up emulsion area. Cinerama film on the right is made up of three separate 35 millimeter images that are actually six perforations high, so you're getting more visual information on the film and since Cinerama soundtrack was always on a separate roll, the entire width of the emulsion is used for photography. This gave Cinerama images pretty much a grainless look as the image area was much larger than even 70 millimeter. Cinerama also preserved a first generation look by creating prints for their theaters struck directly from the original negative. Here is a drawing of a typical Cinerama layout with the three projection booths and the 146 degree deeply curved screen. These Cinerama theaters always had massive curtains to cover the giant louvered screen and would open dramatically to the full width as the Cinerama show started. This restoration project will join together the three separate Search for Paradise images for the first time in 50 plus years, recover as much of the faded color as possible, digitally clean up the wear and tear from the negatives, and create a curved screen look through the application of the Smilebox process. This is Image Trends, the company who is partnering with us on these digital restoration projects. Image Trends is located in Austin, Texas, and they have a scanner called the ScanMaster 4000. This scanner features digital ice, which is automatic defect detection and correction. Here is a brief sample of what the ScanMaster can do with digital ice. As you can see, the image on the left has lots of dirt and scratches on it. And when that same image is scanned using digital ice, the image on the right can show you how it can look with all the dirt and dust cleaned off. So Image Trends was the perfect choice for scanning the damaged and worn Cinerama negatives. This was all done with a special scanning gate on the left that can handle the six perf high film. The regular film gate on the right wouldn't work as it can only do the normal four perf 35 millimeter frames. Let's take a brief look at the ScanMaster 4000 in action. Here, we're scanning a roll of Cinerama film. Each individual frame is scanned at 3K resolution, which gives us plenty of quality to deal with. A typical Cinerama title will need over 600,000 of these six per frames. That's about 53,200 feet of 35 millimeter Cinerama film, much more than the regular two hour feature which is only about 10,800 feet. So a massive amount of material is needed here to create our Cinerama three panel digital restorations. Here is a typical composite of the three Cinerama frames with the barrel warp correction, thus the curved looking frame lines. We then transfer the image and squeeze it into a 16 by nine frame to do our work to take advantage of all the HD real estate. So this is how faded this particular shot is. As you can see, there's a lot of fluttering. As film ages, it fades unevenly and picks up a lot of flickering that was not on the original. And after some extensive density and color recovery work, we come up with the final cleaned up and deflickered image. One of the final steps is then to apply the Smilebox curved screen look of Cinerama. When cameramen did aerial shots, they would often overexpose the image by a stop or two to help prevent vignetting between the three panels. Here is a shot over Bombay, which has a washed out look and is badly faded. One technique we use is to build a traveling mat within the shot to adjust certain elements, such as the water in this case. 
Also, we try to help the slight vignetting with another blend mat between the A and B panels. Here is a composite of the two mats running at the same time with final color work for a slight difference and to get more control over the image. Here again is the before, then the after, and the final smile box composite. This is the raw scan of an evening campfire scene. You will also notice some flickering. After we adjust the color and time the scene for an early evening campfire, the dark vignetting becomes a bit more apparent. So we create two blend mats between the three images extracted from the same shot to lighten up these vignetting areas and then superimpose it over the image to minimize the camera vignetting. As you can see, it helps the problem. Let's turn the mats off so you can see the difference. I will toggle on and off so you can see it a little better. Mat is on, mat off, then on, and off. Here again is the shot before any work. And here is the final smile box shot with the flicker minimized. Here is a shot with the opposite problem. The blend line areas are white or seemingly overexposed. This requires a sliver exposure mat extracted from the same shot but darkened slightly then supered over the background plate to cover those white blend areas. I'll toggle that on and off so you can see the difference. There it is on, off, on, off, on. Just a slight difference but certainly better. Here is an original faded scan composite and as you can see the sky in the far left background is much lighter than the foreground. Here is our overall color adjustments to the shot. Then we add a slight darkening of the background mountains. To do this, the area is isolated with a garbage mat, with the image slightly darkened. Then it's combined with the overall image, and we get a better, more even look to the shot. Here the mat is off, then on, off, back on. And now the final smile box that also has the Boris flicker filter removal applied. Here is a shot with lots of problems. Besides the excessive flicker and blotching in the shadow areas, the scan has picked up an excessive amount of grain or noise in those areas as well. Let's take an even closer look. Now let's even out the grain so it matches the lighter areas of the shot. Now we add Boris Flicker Fixer to minimize the fluttering and blotches. Then apply our color correction. And here is our overall restored image. And then the final smile box master. Here is a raw scan of the coronation audience. Notice how bright it is, especially the plaza area. This is due mostly to the wide angle view of Cinerama photography and exposing for the people in the stands, thus causing the plaza to be washed out. Let's cut a mat and isolate the plaza section and darken it a bit to help the problem. Here it is before the adjustment, then after. Here is another shot where the foreground dark shadow area has turned a bluish green with lots of fluttering and blotches. This is our correction using various mats and some secondary color correction work. Again, the Boris Flicker Fixer comes in handy to minimize the fluttering. And then the final Smilebox Master. Here is a shot on the Indus River. It has some blue chemical-like streaks on the left panel that periodically invade the picture. Let's take a closer look with freeze frames. We don't know what this is. It could be something processed in the original negative or just showed up with age. The one on the bottom right is the same color, but it would appear as a camera magazine light leak. This phenomenon appears throughout this shot, but not on the others in this sequence. Image Trends came up with a technique to isolate this particular shade of blue streak so they could greatly minimize the problem. Here is a side by side with Image Trends correction. And as you see, it is essentially gone. And then the Smilebox version. Cinerama crews were often on exotic locations with sand and dust blowing. On some occasions, hairs or dirt would get into the camera gate causing the problem you see here between the right and center panel joins. Since there was no way to see dailies while on location, 
Problems like this sometimes ended up in the final film. The only way to minimize this was for image trends to do some diffusion effects, which is complicated by the woman as she walks through the shot. This kind of patchwork correction is generally not noticed unless pointed out like we've just done. Here is a raw scan from the coronation parade. You'll notice the dark areas, like the marching band's pants, have turned to a blue-green color. These pants are actually supposed to be black. Let's section off an area and show you the results of the color recovery work to minimize the problem. And then the entire shot. Search for Paradise has over eight minutes of missing negatives. The original lab continuity told us exactly what was missing with this footage chart. This is when we contact our partners on this project over at the Library of Congress. Larry Smith, who is their Cinerama expert, then accesses the original theatrical deposit prints, which are Eastman color and have all faded to a pinkish color. This is quite common with the old color prints of that era. Larry identifies the areas we need and sends the print off to image trends to be scanned. Here is one of the Eastman color shots, and as you see, color recovery will be extensive. Image Trends has developed some new software to rebuild what color they can, and yet give us enough latitude to hopefully refine the color more with the new DaVinci Resolve software. So here we are starting the additional color work to hone in a more realistic, pleasing color. And here's the final result. And the smile box image. Besides the restoration of the picture, we take the original seven-channel magnetic sound print master track, now converted to digital, and remix them for a home video release in 5.1. Often the sound has to be cleaned up and restored somewhat due to the age of the 1957 originals. But we do always maintain the integrity and warmth of the original analog Cinerama mix by comparing the two versions often during the mixing session. Here we have the world premiere of the digital restoration of Search for Paradise. It is being shown on the 146 degree louvered Cinerama screen at the National Media Museum in Bradford, England. Smilebox will look curved on any flat screen and will also fit beautifully on an actual Cinerama screen, preserving the original Cinerama effect. So digital Cinerama seems to have become a reality. Some of you might also be interested in knowing that Image Trends has built in a future-proofing element to this project. That is to say, all 3K scans of each of the separate three panels, as well as a copy of the composited three panels, has been transferred onto LTO4 TAR, or Tape Archive Storage Cassettes, and deposited at the Library of Congress. This potentially will allow some future, and certainly very brave, restorers to someday revisit these titles. And who knows, with future software advances, the Cinerama features could have the potential to be at a resolution as high as 9K. This is David Strohmeyer. Thanks for watching.